As gold prices surged, the disappearance of several affiliated stores under China National Gold Group Corporation, also known as China Gold, and Shandong Gold Group in Beijing have led to a staggering loss of 400 million yuan worth of gold for customers, sparking widespread shock and panic across various sectors. Victims left with no recourse, total 50 and more. The media received reports from victims about a string of abrupt store closures. These stores offered a gold custody service, assuring customers that their gold deposits would be safely and securely stored. However, customers who had entrusted their gold to these stores were met with closed doors and discovered their gold missing when they tried to reclaim their assets. One affected customer, Mrs. Wang, had deposited gold equivalent to 230,000 yuan at the China Gold Store and R&F Mall. She would be receiving an annual return of 10 grams of gold per 400 grams deposited over six years. Now valued at approximately 600,000 yuan, her gold cannot be withdrawn following the store's closure in February this year. In March, another customer, Mrs. Zheng, seeking to renew her gold custody service, was informed via WeChat by a staff member that the company had gone bankrupt and advised her to report the matter to the police. Mr. Li, another victim, has since initiated a rights protection group with over 70 members, mostly victims from the China Gold franchise at RNF Mall. By the end of January 2024, a group survey revealed that approximately 60 kilograms of gold bought by members could not be withdrawn, with at least three individuals having invested more than 5 million yuan each. One 84-year-old man who had sold his property to buy 11 kilograms of gold bars from the store intended to divide them among his children. With the real estate market in a downturn and low liquidity in housing, he believed gold bars would retain value better. The gold bars are now estimated to be worth 5.3 million yuan. Mr. Li, who leads a rights protection group, reported the sudden store closure to the police at the end of last year. By January 2024, the police had called in the complainants for statements. By the end of February, the case was transferred to the prosecutor's office. Beijing Economic Survey Office in Haidian now reports that the case involves up to 400 million yuan. In the rights protection WeChat group, other victims have provided evidence from their contracts, describing a China Gold Investment worry-free pre-order service. Deposits range from 100 to 400 grams, with durations from one to several years, none of which can now be reclaimed. Ms. Guo shared her experience as a patron of the China Gold store located in RNF Mall detailing her purchases of gold in 2013, 2015, and 2019, which cumulatively amounted to approximately 350 grams. She opted to keep her gold in the store's custody and never withdrew it. She emphasized that consumers generally do not distinguish between franchise and directly operated stores, trusting in the brand's long-standing reputation over a decade. Ms. Guo contends that China Gold should still bear responsibility despite the franchise store's abrupt closure. Why do customers choose to leave their purchased gold at the store instead of taking it home? Concerns over home security and the allure of small incentives provided by the stores have been cited as significant factors. For example, the China Gold Store at the Beijing's RNF Mall offers a 2.5 gram gold coin for every 100 grams of gold stored for a year, portraying the service more as a secure storage option rather than a profit-seeking venture. After several China Gold stores abruptly closed and ceased communication, Many customers were left without a way to seek compensation, directing their anger at the China Gold brand. As a prestigious state-owned enterprise governed by the State-Owned Assets Supervision and Administration Commission of the State Council, China Gold has drawn numerous investors to its gold custody services, leveraging its esteemed national reputation. Victims have voiced concerns over inadequate management and supervision, particularly noting that despite China Gold's policy against its franchisees, providing gold custody services, the company did not identify these violations for several years. As a result, victims are finding it increasingly difficult to assert their rights. Many have reported that their complaints to China Gold regarding the closure of franchise stores have been met with a denial of responsibility. Mr. Ding, a victim, shared that during communications with China Gold staff, they adamantly denied any responsibility claiming it was because the store is a franchise. Victims stress a difficulty in distinguishing between directly operating and franchise stores. They expected the security of their gold to be as reliable as money stored in a bank. 
Media reports reveal that the controlling shareholder behind the China Gold franchise store at Beijing's RNF Mall is Beijing Sanding Yuan Gold, and jewelry Zhou Kun holding a 70% stake, abruptly exited the company. This strategic change, occurring just a day before the store's closure on December 26, 2023, suggests a premeditated move. Zhou, with investments across various jewelry companies in Guangdong, Fujian, and Shanxi, remains at large despite the arrest of the store's manager. In response to the escalating situation, China Gold shifted its stance, stating that its headquarters does not permit franchisees to offer custody services. The company expressed its willingness to assist with police investigations and negotiate compensation with the franchisees, yet hesitated to directly assume any responsibility for compensation. An Xiang, the director of Beijing De Xiang Law Firm, argues that China Gold should bear initial responsibility towards consumers, irrespective of the operational model between its stores. Given the significant financial risks associated with precious metal investments, China Gold is urged to proactively accept its legal responsibilities. The incident, highlighting the disappearance of gold from its stores, has shed light on the loopholes within China Gold's franchising model. According to its 2022 annual report, out of 3,642 stores, only 105 are directly operated, with the rest being franchises, revealing a vast reliance on the franchising model. Looking at revenue split per sales model, in 2022, the revenue from the franchise dealership model of China Gold reached 18 billion yuan, while the direct sales model achieved a revenue of 28.5 billion yuan, with the former accounting for 39% of the total revenue. The gross profit margin under the direct sales model was 2.46%, while it was 6% under the dealership model. Additionally, brand usage fees and management service fees brought China Gold a revenue of 172 million yuan, an increase of 25% year over year. This was mainly due to a significant rise of 73% in franchise management service fees compared to the same period last year. The franchise fee for China Gold stores is 50,000 yuan per store, with management fees ranging from 20,000 to 50,000 yuan per year. It is clear that the franchise operation significantly contributed to the company's revenue. In the 2022 annual report, China Gold stated its franchises are the brothers in arms. Despite the trend of franchise stores under these gold companies disappearing one after the other, their expansion efforts have not stopped. Using China Gold as an example, the company announced at an investor relations event on December 26, 2023, that it had met its expansion goal of 4,000 stores by the year's end. This achievement was attributed to the increasing consumer interest in gold through 2023. Alongside supportive franchise policies and improved training for staff, this significantly motivated franchisees to establish more outlets. Furthermore, China Gold plans to continue expanding its network by maintaining a 10% growth rate. Not only China Gold, but consumers of Shandong Gold Group have also encountered similar issues. In August 2022, the Shandong Gold Group store in Beijing's Guiyou Mansion abruptly closed without warning. The bait offered by the Shandong Gold Group store in Guiyou Mansion was that customers could request the store to buy back the gold at the current market price on the agreed pickup date. Compared to the cases involving China Gold franchise stores, the incidents involving Shandong Gold Group franchise stores affected more stores and involved larger amounts of money. Currently, all six Shandong Gold Group stores in Beijing have closed, with the original Guiyou Mansion store now replaced by a China Gold storefront, and the former Shandong Gold Group counter at Beijing's Huamao Palace has been replaced with another brand. Ms. Chen purchased 630 grams of gold bars in October 2021 from Shandong Gold Group, totaling over 221,000 yuan, with a storage period of one year. Ms. Chen said, At that time, the salesperson said it was not safe to keep so many gold bars at home and suggested storing it with a store for a year. They had promised to buy it back at the increased price if the gold price rose, but who could have expected that when I went to retrieve it in 2022, the store had closed and I couldn't get my money back. Shandong Gold Group claims on its official website to be a large state-owned enterprise in the province leading nationally in gold production, resource reserves, economic efficiency, technological strength, level of intelligence, and talent advantages. Since 2017, 
the group has consistently been China's top gold producing enterprise. The situation with the Shandong Gold Group store located in Beijing's Guiyou Mansion can be traced back to its franchisee, Beijing Zijin Jewelry. Previously, Beijing Zijin Jewelry was recognized as Shandong Gold Group's biggest agent within China, and some individuals connected to the case have been arrested. In response, Shandong Gold Group clarified that Beijing Zijin Jewelry has ceased to be a franchisee since 2021. And that they had already reported the franchisee's unlawful operations to the authorities. As the issue intensified, Shandong Gold Group clarified that the Guiyou Mansion store operated as the franchise. They emphasized that their policy forbids franchisees from offering gold custody services, a restriction that also applies to stores they directly manage. Concerning the losses faced by consumers, local authorities have begun an investigation. Shandong Gold Group expressed that it too had been adversely affected by these events, positioning itself as a victim of the situation alongside its customers. Outside Beijing, in the China Gold Store in Tianyu City in Hunan, more than ten customers cannot retrieve their stolen gold products. In February this year, Sina Software Black Cat Complaint also had clients report similar issues with the China Gold Store in Jiaozhou City in Hunan regarding the custody of gold. Ms. Lin, a victim, shared with the media that she participated in a deposit gold receive gold offer in 2023, and purchased 18 grams of gold, choosing to leave it in the store's custody for a year. When she attempted to reclaim her gold in February 2024, after the custody period ended, she discovered that the store had switched owners and the salesperson she had originally interacted with had left. The new proprietor refused her request to return her gold. Claiming that the responsibility for the gold custody service rested with the prior owner, it was not a concern of the current establishment. Following the incident, consumers who lost gold at the store gradually reported the matter to the local police station. Ms. Lin also filed a complaint with the state administration for industry and commerce. More than ten consumers, including Ms. Lin, have yet to receive further feedback on the case. Scams similar to these have taken place in street-level gold stores across various cities. Notably, in 2012, the Zhangjiang City Public Security Bureau's official website featured an article titled "Caution Required for Gold Banks," which highlighted cases reported in the media. The piece explained how some jewelry stores had initiated a scheme where consumers could deposit their bought gold in exchange for an interest paid in gold after a year, mirroring the concept of a gold bank. This scheme was significantly appealing but deceptive. Verging on the illegal act of unauthorized public deposit collection, in China's gold market, there's a saying: "Selling gold doesn't make much money." Gold store owners have reported that their profits during this year's Lunar New Year period have decreased significantly compared to previous years, despite a boost in sales attributed to the festive atmosphere. The surge in the number of branded gold stores has led to widespread price wars, paired with international gold prices being transparent. The primary sources of profit for most gold brands are now limited to processing fees and brand premiums. Industry data reveals that the gross profit margin for the gold and jewelry sector is under 20 percent. When factoring in operational expenses such as rent and salaries, the net profit margins are even more diminished. However, brand franchise stores continue to expand in lower tier markets, further lowering the brand gross profit margins. Regarding why a wave of closures has hit brand franchise gold stores, some Chinese analysts comment that the recent surge in gold prices has led many people to want to sell their gold. Stores may face temporary cash flow issues, forcing them to close down. Another user clarified: Suppose I paid the store three hundred thousand yuan for one kilogram of gold when the price was three hundred yuan per gram, and I simply left it there. When I decided to retrieve it, the store wouldn't feel pressured if the price remained the same. However, say the store spent my money on something else, and the price of gold rose to 500 yuan per gram. It would now need to spend 500,000 yuan to return my one kilogram of gold, or give me a 500,000 yuan refund. If they are unable to do so, they might be forced to run with the gold. Li Hengqing, a U.S.-based economist, spoke to the Epoch Times about the incidents of franchise stores, including China Gold, running off with customers' gold. He pointed out that both China Gold and Shandong Gold Group are state-owned, with China Gold under the direct supervision of the central government. Despite this, they pursued profit through the expansion of franchise stores and other wealth accumulation strategies. 
wherein problems arise, they avoid taking responsibility, resulting in significant losses for customers and damaging the credibility of the Chinese government. Li detailed how the economic downturn has revealed the unsustainable and deceptive aspects of these business models, causing their eventual collapse. This collapse makes the flaws of these failing businesses apparent. As a result, the risk of more businesses defaulting on their obligations is expected to rise, with defaults by gold enterprises potentially setting off a widespread chain reaction. This could further strain the already faltering Chinese economy. China's economy has recently shown signs of weakening across several sectors, a sluggish real estate sector, lackluster domestic demand, foreign capital withdrawal, high unemployment, a depressed stock market, and the depreciation of the yuan. Even as gold prices reach historic highs, it continues to be a popular investment among Chinese investors. It is viewed as a dependable means for preserving wealth amidst economic instability and downturns. Gold acts as a protection against inflation and is considered a secure asset during the uncertain times. Gold stores are vital components of the economic infrastructure. Yet if many gold stores were to fail and shut down because of mismanagement and speculative actions, it could significantly disrupt the financial system. Such widespread closures could destabilize the economy, potentially triggering a domino effect that might lead to an economic collapse and the beginning of a financial crisis.